The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you, Husky! The wonder dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Sergeant Preston and his big lead dog, King, were spending the night with Joe Williams, a trapper in the Yukon. As they sat before the stove after supper, Preston and Joe smiled as they watched King. Carefully and slowly, the big dog walked around a porcupine that ambled slowly across the floor of the cabin. <laughs> you got a smart dog, Sergeant. He knows better than to get too close to Porky. Well, King's had experience with them before. I think he's puzzled by Porky's being here in the cabin. Crazy having a porcupine for a pet. But he's good company. It's better to have him to talk to than uh, talking to myself. And, of course, he never argues or gets mean. I can think of pets that aren't as nice. Porky's little, doesn't eat much, and he's clean. I knew an old man up in Forty Mile who had a pet bear. He was a fine animal, tame as a kitten. I'd be afraid of them, Sergeant. You never know when they'll turn on you. Did he get him when he was a cub? Yes, in fact, I was with Lem when he got him. We were on a hunting trip in the spring. I'll never forget that day. We were stalking a caribou. Lem was ahead of me. He never could shoot very well, but I didn't know until that. He didn't wear glasses because, although he'd had a pair, they were broken. So he tried to get along without them. Anyway, Lem went ahead through a thicket. And suddenly, I saw some bushes move beside him, and a big brown bear rushed at him. Lem, look out! One man. Gosh, I didn't even see it coming. Who? Oh, that was lucky. She almost got you. Uh, that's a good shooting, Sergeant Preston. That's the first time I ever saw a bear attack like that. Look, that's why I got a cub with her. Well, will you look at that now? He's just a baby. They were down wind from him. Must have surprised them. Well, ain't he the cutest little fella you ever saw? Come here, you. <laughs> He's too little to be afraid of you, Lamb. Uh, now, I ain't going to hurt you. Look at him, Preston. He's as cute as a kitten. He sure is. It was kind of mean of us to make an orphan out of you, young fella. Wonder what we'd better do with him. Have do with him? I'm going to take him home and make a pet out of him. Maggie went and let my pet coon go, and we ain't even got a dog around. Well, if your wife didn't like having a pet coon, she's not going to be too happy about a pet bear. Oh, shucks. Even Maggie couldn't help liking this little fella. She's going to have to like him. I always had a hankering for a pet bear. Well, I remember he's not going to stay that size. If he grows as big as his mother, there won't be any room for you and Maggie in your cabin. Well, he'll be good protection. I'm going to call him Brownie. Yes, sir. Brownie, you're looking right at your foster parent. From now on, I'm your pappy. <laughs> Come on, Chuckin. Let's go home. It was almost supper time when we got back to Lem's cabin. When Maggie heard us coming, she let King out. I left him with her that day. King came running to meet us. <laughs> Hello, King, old boy. Well, missed me, didn't you, fella? Do you think you'll bite Brownie? No, Lem. Put Brownie down on the ground. They may as well get used to each other. Careful, King. Don't hurt him. No, okay. King. You take care of him, fella. Don't hurt him. I swear, Sergeant, I think that dog knows everything you say. Look at him. He's licking Brownie. Oh, King knows he's just a baby. Brownie's not afraid of him, either. By gum, they're friends already. That cub is going to have the best disposition in the world. He likes everybody. What are you doing out there? Well, let's hope everybody likes Brownie. Maggie, come here. Look what the sergeant and I brung home to you. Oh, oh do you have to get me in on this? Why, what is it? Well, look at him, Maggie. Ain't he the cutest darn thing? What? Why, it's a bear cub. Yeah? I just knowed you'd like him. He, who said I liked him? Why, well, the, the sergeant here. Um, he <clears> said he knowed you'd be crazy about why, him. Why, uh, uh, well, uh, 
Oh, he is a cute little beggar. You just got rid of that pesky raccoon you had, Lem, and now you bring home a bear. <laughs> well, uh, look, even King likes him. We'll call him Brownie, Maggie. Poor young fella. We shot his ma, and he's all alone in the world. Hmm. And I bet he's hungry, too. Now, you wouldn't want to turn him loose before he can even help himself, would you? Mm, leave it to you to work on my sympathy. Oh, all right, bring him in. No use arguing and letting the supper get cold. Come on. Well, looks as if you won, Lem. Yep. Well, come on, Brownie. We got you over the first hurdle. You know, uh, those little cubs can get into a lot of mischief, Lem. Well, don't tell Maggie that. If I can only keep him till she gets fond of him, it'll be all right. Table. So you put that critter down and eat while it's hot. Hmm, this looks wonderful. Uh, Maggie, can you cook? Oh, now you just help yourself, Sergeant. I knew you two would be hungry. <laughs> Mercy, what, what's wrong? Holy jumping match. Brownie fell in the flour barrel. Uh -oh. In my flour. And who said bears were different. Well, you weren't a very good nursemaid, King. Well, look at him. White as snow. <laughs> He looks like a polar bear cub. Well, never mind, Brownie. I'll take you out and brush you off, and you'll be just as good as new again. Lem was right about that bear. It had the best disposition of any animal I've ever seen. Even Maggie got fond of him, but thought she had to stick to her guns about getting rid of him when he was big enough. I think she was just looking for an excuse to keep him, and she finally found one. She told me about it right after it happened. Lem was delighted. Sergeant, I've decided to keep Brownie. Even though he is getting big as all get out. Glad to hear it, Maggie. Brownie's a fine... The only reason. No. Now, I meant it when I said he should get out when he was big enough. Well, a woman has a right to change her mind. And after the other day, I decided he was good protection. Brownie? Protection? Hey, he wouldn't hurt a flea. No, well, people don't know him think he would. I was all alone in this cabin the other day, and Lem was down working his claim. And that's a quarter of a mile from here. Well, Brownie was in the cabin, and I was just about to shoo him out when I looked out the window and I saw two strange men coming. Well, one was a half-breed and looked ugly. Well, I just got to the door when it opened. The half-breed didn't drink him. You get out of here. Why'd you open that door? Get back, I say. Get foot out of this door. Uh, we hungry. One food, drink, maybe. Well, I, I haven't anything here. Go somewhere else. See all alone, Pete? Yes, yeah, see you alone. Well, what are we waiting for? Push the door open. We'll help ourselves. I'm not alone. I'll show you. Brownie, Brownie, come here. Oh, we not afraid of dogs. Go, what? Get him, Brownie. Go right Hey, there. that bear. A bear. Come on, let's get out of here. You better go. I'll stick him on to you. Oh, good for you, Brownie. Brownie would have just wrestled with him the way he... that half-breed didn't know it. Well, he's getting big enough to scare anybody. Well, anyway, we're going to keep him. He's getting a little more sense now that he's older, but he still steals things to eat. Oh, uh, I brought you a pail of honey this trip. You better keep it somewhere where Brownie can't get at it. Yes, yeah, Sergeant, we better hang it from the ceiling. Honey's his favorite weakness. That's mine, too, on, uh... Maggie's flapjack. <laughs> where is the honey, Sergeant? It's out on my sled, Lamb. Well, I'll get it. of friends. The Johnsons lived near the trail that I patrolled regularly, and I saw them often so the two animals didn't forget each other. However, I didn't see Lem and Maggie until the following summer. I was on horseback, but King always ran beside me. When I rode up to the cabin, Maggie opened the door. Oh, oh, oh there. Easy, fella. Hello, Sergeant Preston. How are you? Fine, Maggie. You're looking well. Lem here? Well, he's working down this way. Won't you come in? No, I'll walk down and find him. It'll do me good. I've been riding so long. Oh, uh, here's another pail of honey for you. Of course, you're uh, not hinting what you want for supper. Well, now I wonder what would go well with honey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> go on and get lamb, and I'll have flapjacks waiting for you. Wonderful, Maggie. Come on, Kim. <laughs> Hello, Lem. Hello. Who is it? 
Thought you'd know my voice, even if you can't see very well. Well, Sergeant Preston, how are you? I ain't seen you in the dog's age. <laughs> well, hello there, King. <laughs> it's uh, time to quit work, Lem. But where's Brownie? I didn't see him at the cabin. Why, he was here a while ago with me. I guess he went over to the berry patch. There's a bunch of berry bushes near here, and he sure loves them. They're ripe this time of year. How is he? Well, wait till you see him, Sergeant. He's as tall as I am when he stands on his hind feet. Oh. Come on, we'll find him. I want to show you how he wrestles with me. Bet you never seen anything like it. The wind was blowing toward us when we got to the berry patch, and we sneaked it quietly. The berries were big and ripe, and there was the bear so busy eating them that he didn't turn his head. Then King did a strange thing. Instead of bounding out at Brownie the way he usually did, he stopped beside me, and the fur on his neck bristled. Lem let out a whoop and rushed forward, grabbing the bear around the neck. I got you, Brownie! The Brownie whirled suddenly, and with one terrific blow, he knocked Lem sprawling ten feet from him. Then with a roar, the bear charged the prone figure of Lem. Then, like a stick of light, King sprang at the bear's beast, his fangs tearing at the bear's shoulder. For a second, the bear's charge was stopped, and I pulled my revolver and emptied it into the bear. The big body sprawled headlong about two feet from Lem. He raised himself slowly. Lem, Lem, are you all right? I, I don't know. Your shirt's torn to ribbons, man, and your back's bleeding. Brownie, he, what happened? I had to kill him, Lem. If I hadn't, he'd have killed you. Brownie... I can't understand. He was my friend. Yes, I know, Lem. He turned on King, too. Are you all right, boy? Well, I guess you didn't get hurt. I shouldn't have scared him, maybe. I... Come back to your cabin, Lem. Don't look at him. I'll come back here later. I can't believe he's dead. I just can't believe he'd do it. I just can't believe he'd do it. I had to carry him most of the way back to see he was weak from shock and pain. Then as we neared the cabin, I heard Maggie... What's wrong with Maggie? Well, I don't know, Lem. Maggie! That's you, Sergeant. What? What's wrong with Maggie? He's hurt. Hurt? Well, what happened? Well, for no reason at all, Brownie attacked me. Uh, Brownie? When? I had to shoot him, Maggie. Just now. He's back in the berry patch. What? Why, he's no such thing. Huh? Didn't you hear me yelling at him just now? What? I came in the cabin and stole that whole pail of honey. Hey, you, you, you mean Brownie's still alive? Why, yes. Look at him. There he is. What? Honey dripping from his chest and jowls like a punctured beehive. Oh, Brownie, Brownie, you're alive. It wasn't you. Then the bear that attacked you wasn't Brownie. Gosh, oh. no wonder, Sergeant. I was wrestling the wrong bear. Oh, what? this all about? We'll tell you all about it, Maggie, but please, the next time Lem's in town, I'd suggest he get a pair of glasses. All right. I realized later that King knew it wasn't Brownie from the beginning. Is uh, Brownie still with Lem? No, oh, yes. He roams around, but always comes back. Well, you can have your bear. I'd rather have a little pet like Porky here. <laughs> well, personally, I prefer dogs, don't I, King? <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. This is Larry McCann speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.